Good evening everyone, this is Agribusiness Now, the program that keeps you informed of all the current activities taking place within the agricultural sector. We have a lot in store for you and I invite you to stay tuned. This evening we will continue to advise you on the Agricultural Produce and Livestock Act of 2007. The Inter-American Institute for Cooperation on Agriculture supports resilience building in rural communities. And we have updates on the annual fishery summer program. We also have the how to do segment along with the news and announcements. Don't go away, Agribusiness Now will be right back. Did you know that the OECS Agriculture Competitiveness Project, otherwise known as AgriCup Project, has been officially launched? Well, it was. And the project aims at enhancing access to markets and sales for competitively selected farmers and fisher folks. But to access funds, you must be part of a productive alliance. So what is a productive alliance, you ask? It's a business arrangement between farmers and or fisher folks on one hand and on the other hand, aggregators. Aggregators can be cooperatives, lead farmers or marketers and agro-processors. The project provides matching grants to a productive alliance. A minimum of 10 farmers or fishers and an aggregator, such as a lead farmer, a cooperative marketer, or an agro-processor. Farmers and fisher folk in Productive Alliance can receive up to $8,000 US dollars, while the aggregator, lead farmer or fisher, cooperative marketer or agro-processor can receive up to $120,000 US dollars. For more information, please contact Ministry of Agriculture, Richmond Hill at 456 one four one zero or four five six one 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 extension three one one or three two one or email agricom svg at mail dot gov dot vc thank you for staying tuned if you are just joining us you are watching agribusiness now for the past weeks, Noel Bruce, legal advisor to the Farmer Support Company Limited, has been sensitizing us on the Agricultural Produce and Livestock Act of 2007. In this first segment of the program, he will continue to look at the Certificate of Registration. Let's go on to Section 8. So now, notwithstanding Subsection 7B, where a person is unable to produce his Certificate of Registration, when so required under subsection 6a, a constable may permit that person to produce the certificate of registration in person within 48 hours thereafter at such police station as may be specified by the constable. And if the certificate of registration is so produced, that person shall not be convicted of an offence under this section. So when the constable visits your place of business where you're doing business and he asks or he requested to see your certificate and please bear in mind as I've just um, stated that this certificate of registration should be prominently displayed just as you would display um, the VAT certificate. So it ought to be prominently displayed. And if on requesting it, it's not in your possession, the constable may request, you, may require that you show up at a particular um, police station within 48 hours with your certificate of registration. You cannot, if you are requested by a constable, to show up at a particular police station and present your certificate of registration. If you do not have a, a, a copy of your certificate of registration in that it was never issued to you, you did not apply for it. You therefore cannot come within 48 hours to the Ministry of Agriculture and apply and be issued with a certificate of registration within 48 hours. So the onus is on you. It is in your best interest to come to the Ministry of Agriculture, fill out 
the application form and be issued with the certificate of registration so that you will comply with these sections and you will not run foul of the law. A four-day workshop hosted by AICA was held here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines from the 15th to the 18th of July with the main objective to teach the participants a new methodology for assessing community resilience. Here is Wilbert Jack of the Communications Unit with more. A capacity development for the workshop which sought to build community resilience for climate change was launched at the Teachers Cooperative Credit Union Conference Facility on Monday, July 15, 2019 and hosted by the Inter-American Institute for Cooperation on Agriculture, AICA. Speaking at the launch, AICA Technical Specialist Michael Dalton gave an overview of what the workshop will cover relative to its objective and extended thanks to the Ministry of Agriculture and other collaborating agencies for making the workshop possible. The Inter-American Institute for Cooperation and Agriculture is pleased to welcome you to our Climate Resilience Workshop. The workshop represents our latest action to support the efforts of St. Vincent and the Grenadines as a whole and our stakeholders, public and private sector partners in particular, to build resilience to adverse climate phenomena. Since 2010, ECA has been increasingly required to undertake actions that we can classify broadly under the banner of climate change, natural resource management, and management of production risks. All of these actions have been undertaken in support of the country's efforts to build resilience to climate change, as captured in Goal 4 of the National Economic and Social Development Plan, whose intent is to improve physical infrastructure, preserving the environment, and building resilience to climate change. This is fully in harmony with ECA's mandate as captured in our strategic plan 2010-2020 and in particular objective 3 of that plan whose aim is to enhance agriculture's capacity to mit mit mitigate the effects of and adapt to climate change and make better use of natural resources. ECA's actions in pursuance of these objectives have generally fallen into the following categories. One, creating a space for dialogue and consensus on climate change action among stakeholder interest groups. Two, undertaking descriptive and prescriptive studies on climate change impacts on the environment and farming communities across St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Three, providing short-term support to farmers in response to weather impacts on agriculture. Four, education and training events for technicians on climate science and mitigation and adaptation approaches for sector stakeholders. And finally, we have sought also to practice what we preach through demonstration pilots on farms, as in our most recent collaboration with the United Nations Development Program, intending to demonstrate to farmers how fairly low technology approaches can serve to build their own resilience in their farming activities. This week, we propose to provide you with further capacity development training intended to equip you with a new methodology for measuring co community resilience. The workshop objective is therefore to build the competence of technical stakeholder agencies involved in such community development work to operate in a more systematic fashion. It is also the intention of the workshop organizers that stakeholders will be able to identify priority issues for, for community action and formulate project outlines for intervention in target communities by the end of the workshop. Remember, the basis of any good action is knowledge. Knowledge is acquired through study. Knowledge must be actioned to make meaningful change to those whom we serve. I wish to thank the Ministry of Agriculture for its support in organizing this workshop. I thank all of the collaborating agencies present here today. And I look forward to continuing our work beyond the life of this workshop to bring meaningful change to the people we serve. The workshop was facilitated by AICA International Specialist Dr. Cheney St. Martin, who gave some compact information and conducted surveys, data collection, and discussions with community stakeholders from Chowaka, Rose Hall, and Chateaubelle. These concluded with analysis and interpretation of data from the survey and group discussions while developing solutions to address community challenges to build resilience. Here is one of the group activities during the workshop. In terms of your family, what's the household like? Members of the household? Well, 
is me, my boyfriend. My boyfriend took it me. My took it me. And I'll be one. So that's five. Five. Five plus my boyfriend. That's seven of you. Seven of you. Yes, yes. Okay, yes. and you just the houses. Not about your sleep. No, oh, sleep, sleep, who can't sleep? When I said, I'm comfortable. Who did tell me the age range of the age? I don't know what you boy, you boy, pick me and you won't be able to put mine on and then. One twelve, I want seven. And you want to be getting here, she falls. She's fine. Yes. That'd be beautiful. Um, are you employed? Employed? So I'm not like fire, I'm going to sit down. Wow. So they could give me a walk. I know when I get the moment of him to roll the walk. Okay. And that is it. And uh, do you have um a premeditation? What? What are you saying? <gasps> we just want to have No, 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 a time, part time job is set. Sometime, but go on, ask my question. I'm ready for you. Go on, go on. I'm, I'm close to finish. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and, um, what, what's your income is like? A family now does do. In the month or in the week, I will send something, maybe about the 300 dollars, maybe 150 dollars, and I will have everything. So 150, 150 dollars. And um, okay, so basically, you are in the income one of the room. Hey man, this is my bush. Me can't wait, me can't move, me can't do no pause. So I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna sit down. Yes, me love the jeans, I said nothing. I think actually you have um, answered the same questions. So, I tell you so for your contribution. You don't know. Yes, I'm finished with it. So what is it? Now tell me where they take me ready, ready for Harry Kevin. Is Harry Kevin coming? Well, looking at that. I mean, I'm going to move. I'm going to move. I'm going to move. I'm going to house and then I'm not going to move. I'm going to move. I'm going to move. I'm going to move. I'm going to send transportation to move here from here. I'm going to separate from the family. I'm just asking this question to your situation. So, so we can help me. We can help me. Like, by analysis, we can help Look at the situation. All right, and I'm sitting patiently for the help. So, thank you for your time. Yes. Changing perception through fishery education. That's the theme for the annual fisheries summer program. The program is organized to educate our youths about the fisheries sector through investment career opportunities. As part of the summer program activities, students were sensitized on safety at sea and also engaged in a fishing activity. Able-bodied seaman Anwar Alexander of the Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Coast Guard provided some tips on safety at sea. We came here to give a lecture on safety at sea and if I'm to give some tips on for all persons, whether teenagers or adults, regarding beach safety or pool safety or river safety, I would have to say, firstly, always let persons, parents, guardians or friends know that you're going to the beach. Let them know where you're going, when you're going, who you're going with and when to expect you back. I would also recommend to all persons to be aware of the beach conditions we got surrounding our islands. Be, be aware of the weather conditions before you go to the beach, such as if we have experience in a tropical depression or storm be aware of any injuries or illnesses that you are suffering from and also the capacity of yourself as a swimmer or non-swimmer. If you are a weak swimmer or non-swimmer, please ensure that you, are in, that you do not go in water above your waist. Please ensure that you practice safety above all other things. And for swimmers, even if you're a swimmer, do not engage in horseplay or top or Ducking or such, which is something that we, that we traditionally practice in Simmons and the Grandines because it's a very bad practice. It can lead to traumatic experiences for both swimmers, non swimmers, and weak swimmers alike. So I want to desist all persons from doing that. Now, regarding equipment or toys that you can use when you go to the beach or a river or a pool, I want to recommend to all families, children, adults, or even grandparents, that when you go to the beach with non-swimmers or weak swimmers especially, 
ensure that there is at least one life jacket or one flotational device such as a life ring, a float is for children or a noodle which can be used as a necklace which will be fit under their arms to be used to act as a flotation device. If you ever caught any current or rip current, there are, there are two common practices that can be used. Firstly, if you're caught in a current, swim perpendicular to the current. Do not swim against the current. Do not, do not try to exhaust yourself and certainly do not panic. You want to swim with the current at first and as long as the current is taking you towards the shoreline, you aim for a specific spot, you shoot towards the shoreline, and try to get yourself out of the current as quickly as possible. Do not swim against it, that will only lead to exhaustion and can lead to a possible fatality. Now regarding rip, rip currents, these are formed around jetties, wharfs, or fixed objects such as rocks when we go to the beach, or around beaches or such. These are very dangerous and these are to be avoided at all costs. Now, if you're caught in one, there are two things that I can recommend for all participants or practitioners of beach activities. Firstly, swim perpendicular to the whip current as it's only going to pull you down and swimming against it is going to exhaust you very quickly. So swim perpendicular to that current. Try to get out of it and ensure that you're safe. But secondly, if you know the area, if you know that the jetty is in a load is, is at a low depth such as such as 10 feet or even let's say 15 feet of water you can dive and allow yourself to go with the go with the rope current down to the bottom do not try to exhaust yourself staying at the top dive with it when you reach to the bottom shoot off of the bottom of the sea floor and dive back up as the, the as a rip current only pulls you down around the object and then it releases you as you go lower that is, so that is my recommendation now regarding rip currents and regarding currents, swim perpendicular towards the shoreline and get away from the currents. Now regarding advice, when it comes to advising persons um, regarding swimming and swimming sandy grandings, we live on an island and we live and there are several islands are, are surrounding us. Each of us should have some aptitude for swimming and it does not come naturally as none of us were born swimmers. We are made swimmers. So the first thing I want to say is that if you have a child and they are about three years old or so, you can start to teach them the basics of swimming if you know how to swim properly. And I'm not talking about just going in the water and throwing one arm, one arm over the other. What I'm saying is someone who has, who has undergone swimming training. I know that there is swimming training always going on at the Shubbury Aquatic Center so if you, if you have some way of contacting them, or you can contact them and undergo some swimming training, or you can contact the SG Coast Guard. We also, we also have swimming training every so often, and we can advise all persons regarding swimming. I also advise all schools to practice swimming in swimming and grandings so that children can have at least a beginner's level in swimming. And that then reduces the risk of for the casualties within our blessed country. Students spoke about their experience and what they have learned throughout the summer program. Now, we were just visited by the SVG Coast Guard, which is currently located in Calco, and what they taught us was safety at sea, which is the do's and don'ts procedure in what to do when you're at the beach and what to do if someone is in a life-threatening situation. So, with this, with the fisheries summer program, I, really took interest in it because I wanted I wanted it for like to help me with my career path in the future and to benefit me because I wanted to be an entrepreneur at the same time and a part-time marine biologist and this program helps me to you know back up with this with my proficiency so that because as a child I was like fascinated about everything that was going on in the sea and to discover it more. To this summer program I learned that I learn about mangrove trees. We we'll go on hikes and everything. We'll, I learn about different creatures and species. We learn about trees and the soil and everything. Um, we learn how to feel a fish, how to clean fish and those things. Yeah. And this morning, the Coast Guard teaches us how to be safe in the seawater. This morning, the Coast Guard 
teachers and how to be safe at the water and what to look at and what we are supposed to do in trouble to help others and also to help ourselves. During the course of the week I learned how to fill a fish, how to clean it and how to process it for a longer shelf life and that we can make our own products in the Caribbean to make a better country in terms of health wise. My expectations that I wanted to learn is about the different climate changes in the weather of where the fishes would live and the other sea creature animals and how they inhabit the waters and the different marine lives and the coral reefs and how they live and how the animals live from them and the protections that we are supposed to do to take care of our marine life. Ernie Bracken, senior fisheries assistant, outlined the details of the fishing activity. What is actually going on here is the fishing activity part of our summer program 2019. So the children are engaged presently, have a first hand experience in the Gayan method, which is the hand line. They are very, as you can see, they are very enthusiastic and they are very excited and they are actually, at the end of this, they are actually going to receive a prize for the most fish caught. It's like a mini Fisherman's Day activity. So we have two groups, um, those in the grey shirts, they represent the coral reef and those in the orange shirt, they represent lionfish. So it's like a mini competition, as I mentioned before. And at the end of this, maybe we will run it for another 15 to 20 minutes. So we would collect all the fish caught for each group. And then the, we will take them and weigh them. And then the, um, the winner, the group that caught the most fish in terms of weight, in terms of pounds, will award them a, a prize. Okay, so they are excited, as I said before, and most of them, as you can see, they recognize this activity as not as a as a, as a hobby, but most of them recognize this as a, a job opportunity. Because in this field, in the industry on a whole, we, they can make a lot of money out of this. The fishing industry is a lucrative industry. And we're teaching them not only to um, see fishing as, you know, as, as an activity for dropouts, but as a career because we have many careers in, in, in fishing. You can be a, a fisher going out on a daily basis, a vendor, you can become a fisheries officer to deal with um, policies, um, you can become a bioresearch officer, a chemist, you name it. So we have many careers in fishing. So. 2019 summer program, program we are spearheading. We'll culminate, culminate tomorrow with a beach cleanup at Bible Beach and we'll run it off hopefully next week Wednesday with a picnic for the students. Students express their excitement about the activity. We are out here catching fish, we are in Cree Reef and we are doing a competition against reef and lionfish to see which one of us is going to catch the most fish and so far reef is taking most of the fish in the competition. It is kind of fun but the fish and them too greedy they're taking off all my bait and ain't want to hook on any hook. So yeah for me it's fun the whole program. This is actually my first time on the jetty trying to catch fish 
and I just caught my eighth fish for the day and me and Richard is just having a good time. Right now I am trying to catch a fish. I already caught four and I'm trying to get more. And I will encourage people to come to this summer program because it is very fun and you're getting to learn about the um, different creatures in the seawater and the size of the fishes and what they're supposed to do and what they're not supposed to do. You are watching Agribusiness now and we are into our how to do segment where you will learn how to clean a boat engine. So make sure you rinse the engine first with um, some fresh water. Then oil it down from um, avoid the um, salt and things stay on it. And keep it more, uh, more clean and nice and thing from the salt. Most salt eat the engine dog and you get to um, feed the engine and they bring a different color. So we make sure you have to fit some fresh water first and then add it down to keep it. Here are the news and announcements. Cattle farmers from Fancy to Peruvian Vale who are interested in commercial cattle production are asked to contact the New Bronx Agricultural Station at 4511683. That's 4511683. And farmers are asked to note that Vinci Fresh Limited will not be purchasing passion fruit this week. Should you have any questions or concerns, please contact Vinci Fresh Office at Diamond or call 4585005. That's 4585005. Well, we have come to the end of another Agribusiness Now program, but we'll be here again next week, Wednesday at 8.30 p.m. with another interesting one. For more information, feel free to contact us at the Communications Unit within the Ministry of Agriculture at 456-1111, extension 312 or 472, or email us at citumef2 at hotmail.com. Remember, you can view more of Agribusiness Now programs on our YouTube channel, Agribusiness Now St. Vincent, or like our Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash agribusinessnow to get more updates. Until next time, I am your host, Nakisa Samuel. Thank you for viewing and do have yourself a wonderful night.